Listen. So we got a double feature today. One is an action thriller starring Paul Blart as a neo-Nazi, and the other is a cop thriller where a ghost tries to defund him. Let me explain. So Becky's a Tribeca film by the guys who did Bushwick and Cooties, and one of the directors even claims that the premise is a little bit of Home Alone with the tone of Green Room with Hit Girl mixed in there. It topped the Wretched for the number one spot at the box office. And honestly, that's all thanks to Lulu Wilson. She went from being haunted all the time to doing the hunting. The gore and the practical effects, I think, are, are definitely the standouts, and I'd give it a junior price on that alone. Even though the story is more of a streaming, in my opinion, I think if you're a fan of movies like Your Next, uh, this will be right up your alley. Just know that it's like the Redbox original version of that. And like, I really mean it's a Redbox original version of that. So full spoilers. The story follows Becky, whose mother has passed. She's getting bullied at school. And the one retreat she's going to get with her father gets interrupted by... We've decided to get married. What? Meanwhile, Dominic and his neo-Nazi clan escape from prison to go look for this key. And really, it comes off as a MacGuffin, which the creators know. They just don't want you to know. Or leave sufficient clues. What the fuck could it open that would make it worth all of this? Whether it's a safe full of guns or some master plan for their one-race world, symbolically, it's just there to be their driving force that leads them to go get killed by a 13-year-old girl. But what they did have down was how purebred this man was. Endurance. Intelligence. Strength, traits they were bred for, it's in their blood. That's why you never let them mate with other breeds. You get the worst of both. Okay, I think it's time for you to go. Yeah, he posted up a white square. But I'm doing it for your kind as much as mine. Oh, is that right? It's crazy to think that Simon Pegg originally was cast for this role and dropped for <laughs> another movie that we'll talk for another time. But I, I do think Kevin James does a good job. They invade the house while Becky is out in her treehouse and starts walkie-talking with them. They shoot the mom's knees, brand McHale, blam McHale, and shoot a dog twice pretty much if them being nazis wasn't enough for becky to go ramble on them they give it to you in 30 minutes it's also sort of a story of empowerment i really think it is because it's a young girl who's getting to be angry and sort of show her emotions in that really raw way that doesn't we don't really see that so much with um teenage girls in movies after killing her dad she hits him with the uppercut pokes his eye out causing kevin to do what I do after watching a lot of his other movies. This girl is skylining like Laura, crafting like Croft. She's taunting them, adding her own theme music. She's the one setting the rule, lures into their necks. Honestly, she's so good at killing that she gets bored. You know, I think there's a big difference and uh, it, between real violence and cinematic violence and that idea that you can kind of uh, get out your aggressions and kind of sit back and let this, you know, shocking ride, wave, you know, ride, you just ride it and, have fun with it and not, you know, take it too seriously. I'm sure there's an R-rated cut out there that goes even further. The directors talked about multiple takes for the eyeball scene where Kevin just yelled in pain as he tried to cut it out in multiple ways. But really, there's a lot a couple more seconds of footage can do. And that's why in less than an hour, Dom comes in more disappointed than the Hitler meme. Becky is a strong-willed and vindictive as they come. She ain't wrong. Girl was legit gonna leave them there to die just because they weren't related to her. I said, you and your mom and your little brother, you'll all be safe. My mom's dead! Obviously, the movie is dealing with anger and overcoming grief. There's a scene where they talk about proving one's love for another, and Dominic's perspective is all on obedience. And for a second, with the hate she had for her stepmom, and with the way she killed with so much angst, and the fact that the key was in her mama's property, I almost thought Becky was gonna turn. Movie even begins with all these parallels between the prison and Becky at school. She gets picked up, when they get picked up, they cut between the transport vehicle and hers. But as Apex, the very big henchman says, It's not too late for you. You're just a kid. So instead of going the violent route, she goes the violent route. K -K Kevin does try to bring her into his clan, but keeping with the Home Alone homages, she tells him goodnight. <laughs> I love how he tried to picture that together they can go far, and instead she Fargo's him. The three of them get rescued as they sit next to Becky calmly, even though they know she just took out half a dozen men with no heavy artillery, and lies to the cops about the key that they were after, clutching onto it, even though it has the same double symbol on it that they would have noticed tattooed on all of the dead bodies that were splattered all over the place. Literally, it was on their skulls all the way down to their toes, so... I don't know how the police didn't do a double take on that. Perhaps she's saving it for a sequel, considering the fact that they never really sold the getaway house, and now Becky can go back whenever she wants and figure out what the key really means, or what exactly it would unlock. 
if they wanted us to know. The movie begins with Becky being angry and ends with her being angrier, so I am curious to see whether she embraces her new family or them her, whether she gets trapped in the system, or if she continues her vigilante justice of exterminating this hateful ideology like we've seen so far. Did it take years of hard work to get this fucking stupid? Okay. Body Cam comes from Malik Vital, who previously did Imperial Dreams and is now doing his first horror with the tagline being Protect, Serve, Survive. It centers around another police shooting that's on the news and now they're not welcomed, like even in the spiritual world. Get on the ground! Where are you going? I think the movie has a very interesting premise and twist, but as clever as the mashup of genres is, it, it could have been a little bit better in my opinion, but it's still worth a stream if you're able to catch it, so. Full spoilers. We follow Mary J. Blige's character, Renee, a Louisiana cop who just got back from her eight month leave after her body cam footage of hitting a civilian was released. Have you moved on from your son's death? I need to work. I really need to work. I'm going to recommend you return to active duty. Mental Health 101, overworking yourself to not handle your personal issues, probably not the best thing when you have authority to carry a lethal weapon. They bring in Danny, who's going on a ride-along with Renee while tensions in the city are still high. At one point, they try to help a kid out on the street, and the black comes out expeditiously to boot him, and Renee does the right thing by leaving. How good at you handled that, though? They go to another crime scene where they find teeth on the hood of a car, and the officer, from the beginning, jeepers creepered up on a pole. And it's only Renee who sees what's on the recording before disappearing. And that's where I think the movie could have worked better, from the thriller aspect, intertwining her grief and the paranormal to the point that we as the audience wouldn't know what's true or not. But we kind of do, and it's pretty obvious. So you're kind of just waiting for the horror tropes to happen. The practical effects were pretty good, especially in the convenience store involving these two hooligans trying to go viral and then losing their vitals when... Again, why the spirit attacks some people and not others when they're right in front of them, I don't know, but we kind of find out later. Renee starts Googling and gets closer to cracking the case. You need to fucking let it go. What the fuck you mean, let it go? Hey, just leave it alone. And throughout the film, you can see the guilt consuming Danny since he knows the truth, and it isn't until after his suicide that he leaves behind his body cam to reveal the cover-up. We see that a nurse's son was shot by cops who kept yelling at him and then shot him after not complying, only to find out that the kid was deaf. Shit, he's deaf. And so they take a page out of real life. The optics on this look real bad. Yeah. You understand me? Uh-huh. It gets out we shot a kid in the public and the administration and everybody's gonna ream our ass. They suffocate him with a bag, which, you know, along with the shattered teeth from his fall, become the reoccurring visuals for every incident. It then turns out that the chief is in on it too. We need to stay unified about what happened. It's almost like the whole department is in on this. He died because of you. You know, I always thought you were a cop first. I am a cop first, bitch. <laughs> And so DeMarco's mother then appears with the spirit that's been enacting revenge and goes, You about to lose your job. You about to lose your job. Who the fuck are you? In the end, the case gets uncovered and justice is brought. But like the tagline pokes at, it should be focusing less on their own survival, but the idea of their job, which is protecting and serving. Like imagine a firefighter looking at a burning building and denouncing their duty because, you know, their family. It's a decent genre blend that I would have loved to see more of, uh, especially behind the spirit, considering the location, the ramifications of all these cops having their badges blacked out. But overall, the strongest through line in the film is that of these two mothers, who even after death, even after all these cover-ups and ravaging spirits, don't stop looking out for their children. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, in terms of Becky, like I said, uh, I really like the visuals of it. It's the same cinematographer, Greta Zazula, from the half of it, and I really like the visuals in that one as well. Uh, and it just so happens to be a story about uh, violence not begetting violence, even though it includes scenes like this. <laughs> Body cam, on the other hand, I really enjoyed the story. I just felt that maybe a lot was cut out. In fact, there is a quote talking about how much of it was actually cut out. And you actually look at the release schedule and you realize that they pushed this back and delayed it a lot. So I'm sure there's a lot of other behind the scenes dealing with it. But uh, as of now, I'm still more an Alex versus Nat fan. I think he's still got the better movies, but I'm curious to know your thoughts, especially right now with all the police shows that are getting canceled. Cops calling in fake complaints. I I've talked about how this is practically the, the cop genre 
has become its own thing and you've been seeing it leak into other movies uh, recently comedies where it that's actually like the twist for a lot of the villains so uh, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of that in a bunch of other movies but i'm curious on your thoughts on these two any other ones that you guys would recommend and until next time don't forget to comment like and subscribe or kevin james will moped into your house